So as we've been talking about having given birth to a new form of religious life, in recent years, there have been some challenges to this new form that has been birthed, and this has caused some particularly painful moments for us women religious, and um, we're thinking of them as birth pangs. But the first of those came in January of 2009, when the apostolic visitation of women religious in the U.S was announced by Cardinal Rodet, who was the prefect of the Congregation for the Institutes of Consecrated Life and Societies of Apostolic Life. And we were quite um, taken aback. We didn't know this was coming. They, this is a formal investigation um, initiated into our lives, and the only reason we have been given for this investigation is to look into the quality of our lives. Mother Mary Claire Malaya, the Superior General of the Apostles of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, was named the Apostolic Visitator. And she carried out then this um, process of visitation in three phases. The first phase was that each of our um, religious superiors was asked to fill out a written questionnaire with a number of questions. We were then, um, each of our uh, superiors general then met individually with, sis with Mother Mary Claire. And then the final phase was certain congregations were selected to uh, receive teams of sisters who were visitators who visited our congregations on site. All of the feedback from this, these three phases was gathered and Mother Mary Claire submitted this report in December of 2011 and we don't know yet the outcome of that apostolic visitation. The second moment happened in April, April 18th of 2012, when the, it was announced by the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith that they had done a doctrinal assessment of the Leadership Conference of Women Religious, or LCWR, and um, they had uh, expressed serious concerns about the uh, doctrinal uh, underpinnings of the materials, the assemblies, et cetera, of LCWR. LCWR, as most of you know, comprises about 80% of the women religious in the United States. There is another organization, the Conference of Major Superiors of Women Religious, the CMSWR, which represents about 15% of women religious in the U.S. In the doctrinal assessment that came out then in April of 2012, first, uh, they, excuse me, first they expressed gratitude for the sisters' love of the church and our ministries in schools and hospitals and our social work, but they expressed concerns about serious doctrinal problems as they, uh, as they um, evaluated it. Their concerns um, centered around the presentations at the assemblies of LCWR, and um, they were concerned about um, some speakers who had taken positions that were at odds with the bishops, and some who were presenting what they uh, considered radical feminism, and they were also critiquing the participation of LCWR in network and in the research resource center for religious institutes. They also were um, uh, asking questions about what they perceive to be our silence on some issues that the bishops have been very vocal on, such as abortion, euthanasia, the church's views on family life and sexuality. And uh, while they lauded our work in promoting social justice, they expressed these other concerns. And so the mandate by the um, by the doctrinal assessment then of the CDF was first that the LCWR statutes uh, be revised regarding its scope and mission and responsibilities, and the, this revised statutes um, are to be submitted uh, to the Congregation for Religious Life for review. The, um, in addition to that, the plans, programs, and publications of LCWR are to be reviewed. The systems thinking handbook by LCWR has been withdrawn, and programs and speakers um, for LCWR are to be approved by the bishops who have been 
delegated to oversee this uh, revision. Uh, that's Archbishop Sarton of uh, Seattle, who is leading that, um, that delegation. They, LCWR is also to create new programs and materials for initial and ongoing formation. And uh, also this review comprises reviewing the liturgical norms and text, texts used at LCWR assemblies. And, and as I mentioned, to review the links with Network and the Resource Center for Religious Life. Um, as most of you in the room know, that our response to this was um, deep distress for some shock and outrage, deep sadness, um, a, a sense of feeling that our ministries have not been valued, that the directions that we have so carefully chosen um, have, um, have created tensions in some realms. Some people have reviled sisters for not being what we used to be, not looking like we used to look, or not doing what we used to do. Some have um, called us disobedient, whereas we have thought that we were being most obedient to what Vatican II asked of us and responding to the signs of the times. The majority of lay people, many priests, many of our brothers, many sisters from other parts of the world have poured out a, a huge amount of expression of support for us. People have been wearing buttons saying, we stand with the sisters, or we love the sisters, or some even say, we are the sisters, identifying very closely with the directions that we have chosen, and um, not only supporting us in uh, this particular moment of challenge, but also feeling like the, the kinds of things that they have embraced since Vatican II are now being called into question.